Welcome back to the channel where we explore, learn, and theorize about the Marvel Universe. Today I'll be breaking down the fifth episode of WandaVision, but if you haven't watched it yet or don't want any spoilers, don't worry, you can watch the first half of the video normally, where I'll be talking about the Venom 2 trailer at the Super Bowl, Thor Love and Thunder setting up Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, and Ammon and the Wasp Quantumania starting filming, and then I'll let you know when the spoilers are coming. If you're new to the channel, or even if you've been watching for a while, make sure you subscribe because more than 96% of you guys aren't subscribed. And if you think you're subbed, double check because apparently there's a glitch where people are getting unsubscribed from certain channels. And remember that a subscription is free for you, but it really helps the channel a lot. And you can always unsub later if you want. Now let's get started. First, take this with a huge grain of salt, but it's possible that we could get a Venom 2 Let There Be Carnage trailer this Sunday during the Super Bowl. As a fan asked Sony's Belgium Twitter account if the Venom 2 trailer will be posted with Dutch subtitles on Sunday, and they responded with, our colleagues over at Sony Pictures will take care of that. See you Sunday. So if this is real, then we're going to get our first look at Venom 2 this Sunday during the Super Bowl. Next, according to Daniel Rickman, Tobey Maguire is still in negotiations along with Emma Stone. Previous reports regarding Tobey's diva behavior on set were misrepresented. He's been a diva during negotiations, but he hasn't been on set yet. Also, there are three undisclosed villains. He also says that Andrew Garfield is listed on a casting grid as a male lead, but is still in talks and hasn't signed on to Spider-Man 3 yet. Now at this point, it's just confusing when people keep saying that they have signed on and others say they haven't. But we already know that they're going to appear in the movie in some way. What's interesting though, is that he says that three villains haven't been revealed. We know that Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus, Jamie Foxx's Electro, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and Thomas Hayden Church's Sandman will appear. But the other three are most likely Craven the Hunter, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, and Michael Mando's Scorpion. Moving on, James Gunn was asked by a fan how much input he'll have on Thor Love and Thunder, to which Gunn replied, not much. And Taika Waititi is doing a great job. The script is amazing. We talked before he started writing it about where the characters are and where they're going. And he read the script for Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, and then I read his script and shared my thoughts. So it seems like Thor 4 will set up Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and just like with WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I bet we're going to start seeing a lot more trilogies between different characters and teams instead of what we've gotten so far, like Iron Man 1, 2, and 3. And speaking of Guardians 3, it's been revealed that after James Gunn was fired, and before he was rehired, Marvel approached Adam McKay to film Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and an Inhumans movie. And this is awesome because we know Miss Marvel will be the MCU's first Inhuman. But now we know that Marvel have plans to introduce the royal family, and it seems like it could be very soon. Next, both Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas announced that Ammon and the Wasp Quantumania was coming in 2022. Then yesterday, the Turkish Minister of Culture and Tourism, Mehmet Nuri Ersoy, revealed that Ammon and the Wasp Quantumania has already started filming in Cappadocia, Turkey. And lastly, the fifth episode of WandaVision just came out, so if you haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet, then click off the video now, as I'll be breaking down the fifth episode and covering all the easter eggs. So once again, there will be major spoilers ahead for WandaVision episode 5. Starting off, we see that Billy and Tommy haven't slept in days, so Wanda tries to use her powers, but it once again confirms that she's not fully in control, as nothing happens and the babies continue to cry. At that same moment, Agnes walks in like she always does and says that she'll take care of the twins. But Vision starts freaking out like any new dad would, and this is when things start getting crazy. Agnes looks at Wanda and asks her, do you want me to take that again? Should we just take it from the top? Then she grabs her bag to go back outside and redo the scene. So like we already knew, Agnes definitely knows what's going on, and she's just playing along with Wanda's sitcom. But Vision also knows that something's wrong, and when he tries to prove it to Wanda, she once again manipulates him and pretends to not know what's going on. But then the twins grow up right before Agnes's eyes, and she acts like it's normal. We then transition over to Sword, where Monica wakes up. They run some tests on her, but they come back empty, possibly hinting towards Monica getting her powers when Wanda launched her out of Westview. Then Hayward starts briefing everyone about Wanda, and he asks Jimmy Woo if she has a nickname, so I wouldn't be surprised if in the next episode, they start to call her Scarlet Witch. Next, we see Wanda break into the sword base where they were keeping, and it looked like experimenting on Vision's corpse. And Paul Bettany previously revealed that there was a cut post credit scene in Avengers Endgame, which showed Vision in a body bag. So Wanda clearly stole and revived him so that he could live with her in Westview. However, like Jimmy asked, how did she bring him back without the Mind Stone? Well, this once again ties back into Ralph, Agnes' husband, who we believe is the Grim Reaper. In the comics, Vision was created based on Wonder Man's brain, so it's likely that after stealing Vision's body, Wanda unknowingly teamed up with the Grim Reaper, who tricked her, and using his powers to summon demons, could have made a deal with Mephisto to use Vision's body as a vessel to bring his dead brother back to life. And the deal could have been that Mephisto wants Wanda's kids, which would explain why Agnes is always around them, and why she saw them grow up twice, but was unfazed. Going back to Westview though, we see that Billy and Tommy are 5 years old now, and they found a dog which Agnes conveniently named Sparky, which is a reference to the dog Vision created in the comics. However, Vision states that they have to be at least 10 years old to take care of the dog, and the twins once again grow older. 
Sword then sends a drone into Westview, which is able to go inside because it's from the 80s. Therefore, it doesn't have to change as it fits straight into the sitcom. And Monica tries to talk to Wanda through the drone, but Hayward, who I'm betting will end up being a villain as well, orders the drone to shoot a missile at Wanda and the twins. The show then confirms that Wanda knows exactly what's going on, and even if she isn't fully in control, she can still enter and exit the town as she pleases, because she drags the drone back to Sword and reinforces the barrier. We also see that Sword sends an email to Vision at his job, and by this point, Vision knows that something is wrong, so he uses his powers on Norm, taking him out of Wanda's control. Then Norm begs Vision to help him because Wanda's in his head and it hurts, but Vision just puts him back into the trance. And around this time, we see that Billy and Tommy are looking for Sparky, who ate some leaves from Agnes' azalea bush and died. But this is once again part of Agnes and Ralph's plan to get the kids because the twins almost grew up again, but Wanda was able to talk them out of it. Backtracking a bit, we see Monica talking with Darcy and how they could get back into Westview. And Monica states that she knows an aerospace engineer who might be able to help them. And many people believe that she could be referring to Reed Richards, but like I covered yesterday, Jack Schaefer, the creator of the show, stated that any connections to the Fantastic Four are merely coincidences. And if you read the Spanish subtitles, when Monica is talking, we can see that she's referring to a woman. Now, this woman could actually be Talos' daughter. We saw in Captain Marvel that Monica and Talos' daughter were roughly the same age, and if she transformed into a human like her parents, it wouldn't be too far-fetched that she grew up and studied alongside Monica, possibly as an aerospace engineer. But what's interesting is that Jimmy asks if they've identified the twins yet, and Monica says that those are Wanda's real sons. Darcy then says that if everything in Westview is real, then Wanda has an insane amount of power, and Jimmy says far exceeding anything she's displayed in the past. But Monica states that Wanda could have single-handedly defeated Thanos if he hadn't initiated a blitz, and that nobody else even came close. But Jimmy says Captain Marvel came close, and Darcy asks, didn't her powers come from an Infinity Stone too? But Monica looks like she's mad at Captain Marvel, possibly for letting her mom die, because she says that they're talking about Wanda and not Captain Marvel. And you can see that Jimmy and Darcy know something's wrong between them. But Monica will play a large role in Captain Marvel too, so I wonder what happened, how they'll fix it, or how it'll lead into the movie. Anyway, back at Westview, Vision once again confronts Wanda about what's going on, but she tries to end the episode. This leads to them arguing, and Vision yells at Wanda to stop lying to him, that he's scared, and that he doesn't even remember anything before Westview. He also asks why there's no kids in Westview, and demands to know what's outside of the town. But Wanda once again manipulates him, and says that he doesn't want to know, and plays off her controlling everyone is impossible. But before Vision can ask her anything else, the doorbell rings, and we see none other than Evan Peters Quicksilver. But what's interesting is that Darcy realizes that this isn't Pietro, and she asks, did Wanda really recast him? So it seems like this could be a permanent change, even if it doesn't make Fox's X-Men movies canon. And lastly, this episode's commercial was for Lagos paper towels, for when you make a mess you didn't mean to. And this of course is referencing the Lagos incident, when Crossbones blew himself up, and to save everyone, Wanda launched him into the air, but killed many people in a hospital. But let me know what you guys think about all this. Are you glad we could get the Venom 2 trailer at the Super Bowl? Are you excited for Thor 4, Guardians 3, and Ant-Man 3? And what did you think of WandaVision Episode 5? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you'll never miss another video. Thanks for watching, and remember to wash your hands and stay safe.